the words that God has said concerning us, our prophetic word will find expression. We are praying for ourselves to have revival in every area of our lives, in every area, maritally, uh, academics, uh, career, that's what we're praying. But we're singing it because you might not be able to talk, talk words for 48 hours, but you can sing answers for 48 hours. And then we're asking for transformation. We're asking the Lord, transform us, transform us. Transform. And we're also asking for reformation. First of all, for ourselves. And then for our church, the, ch the body of Christ. And then for our nation. We want to live in a better world. We want to live in a better Nigeria. And we believe that what we make happen for others, God will make happen for us. The Nigeria we're calling is the one we will live inside. You know, the Bible says something that people will say there's a casting and you say there's a lifting up. In other words, in as much as we all live in the same country, you're having a different experience because you're targeting revival, transformation, and reformation. So avalanche is not just a concert where people are coming to sing. We're breaking through the walls of darkness. We're, we're pushing back the walls and asking for more of God, that the presence of God will come and break through the things and give us another answer. How many of you would like that? Praise God. That's, yeah, that's what, that's, so um, for this avalanche, I'm ready two months ahead of time. Before the new t-shirt, because each new t-shirt carries a new theme. Before the new t-shirt comes out, I'm wearing my avalanche t-shirt. By the time I saw the choir with avalanche t-shirt on Sunday, I knew they were not joking. I knew that this time it was going to be serious. I missed wearing it by a stroke of a, of, a, of a, this thing. I turned to them that day. I said, these people's behavior is the best behavior of this period. We are saying, let the sound of heaven touch earth. If people will go for Igbe, 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 a local festival, and they are beating drums, and things will happen, Igbe, how about those of us who will now begin to call for the sound of heaven? Do you know what will happen in your inner world, in your outer world, in every part of you? You can't imagine it. Listen, you, you, until you experience it, don't be told. And for this avalanche, prepare yourself ahead of time. If you can do three, one stretch watch of three hours, two stretch watches, if you can do six hours, when you go for wedding, how many hours do you spend? You go for bito, how many hours do you spend? You go to the market, how many hours do you spend? You go for training, how many hours do you spend? Who who deceived you that once you do one hour? If you join Chirpin and Seraphim, you might even, you go for prayers, you can do 24 hours. If God has given you the grace, go for it. Some of us, you are done with bearing children. Some of us, you are at the stage where you're starting life afresh. What will be, what will be stopping us? What will be stopping us if not the flesh? Carry your pillow, carry your mattress, carry something to cover. You finish, you go there, you throw your pillow, cover yourself. Did you see the kind of testimonies the choir have been sharing for the last two, in the last two or three, three years? They are sharing impossible testimonies. Look at his Sokken testimony. They are the ones, they will first of all do the rehearsals. Then they will come and host and stage 48 hours singing nonstop. What do you think? God will just forget them. God doesn't behave like that. He doesn't behave like that. He will turn around like this and reward them in every way. Even someone that came to a place of, look, it, it, if it's a kind of testimony, we're going to play it again and again so that it will remind you of God's impossibility. Look at a Bube's testimony. All of them from the choir. Don't deceive yourself. God is not more, whatever man so, so shall be. If you're coming for a casual visit, you just say, you say for 30 minutes, you go home, what are you going home to do? Is a retreat. Avalanche is a retreat. The difference is that we are not talking. We are singing. We are hosting. We are hosting the king. We are, in Avalanche is hosting the king as we sing and as we pray. So prepare your heart. Prepare your spirit. Sanctify yourself and begin to prepare ahead of time. I am wearing my t-shirt consistently to remind myself. This particular Avalanche, I have targeted heavy things. If we sing for 48 hours, something must happen. Not just in our nation, 
but inside me something must happen if we sing for when we sing not if when we sing for 48 hours there is bound to be transformation we'll go through metamorphosis we'll go through different stages different stages until we come to a place of glory so prepare yourself in every way prepare yourself in every form and get ready for that avalanche all right praise the lord hallelujah okay i'm waiting for joy tell joy i'm waiting for her to come so that we can begin to do something colossians chapter 1 verse how many of you were at um, open heavens prayers this morning jesus i'll tell you what happened i took up i, I saw this revelation i shared it at the women platform i saw this very dangerous revelation i think in the night we started praying by 3 40, 42 and stopped at 5 5 27 that same revelation the moment pastor ben started open heaven that was what he started with and it wasn't as if we were in the same location i was so afraid that the moment he finished i called him i said this prayer you took from psalm 56 is the prayer i just finished praying now so those of us in the women department we have declared a strategic prayers from that it's too much of a coincidence once the Lord has spoken, twice I've heard that power belongs to God. So if you missed open heavens today, ah, you missed too much. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So Colossians chapter 1, verse... 11 verse 12 verse 13 Colossians chapter 1 verse media you watch what they did so that the next time the sound manager is not there you do what they just did I didn't find it easy preaching in the afternoon because of the sounds please watch it so that you can or snap it save it being strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Uh, this morning or this afternoon, we're talking about these scriptures. <clears throat> you see, in life, there are difficult people. As you go through life, from the day you were born to today, you're going to meet difficult people. Either you meet them at your place of work, or you meet them while you're working, or, or, or while you're working on the road, or you meet them in the market. Anywhere you meet difficult people. There are difficult customers. There are difficult uh, bosses. There are difficult, there are difficult people everywhere. When you meet difficult people, how do you handle them? The same way, just like if there are difficult people, there are hard circumstances. There are circumstances that are hard to bear. There are circumstances that are very challenging. There are circumstances that are very intense. When you meet those circumstances, how do you go through it? There is a way life works. You throw your ball. You throw your ball to the right. You look at it, the ball has gone to the left. You are trying to manage the ball again back to the right. Before you know it has gone to the, gone to the side. Or it has even gone over the bar. Someone who put the ball on the ground to kick the ball is not kicking over the bar. He's targeting, it's a goal. But sometimes it does, it's not really quite it's a goal. You just discover that it's not a go, it is over. How do you balance, create that kind of balance when life throws that kind of thing to you? Sometimes you have, le uh, you have oranges. You press the oranges to drink. Before you are about to drink them, they have fermented. Or you buy orange juice. You put, it, put them in your mouth, it has fermented. How do you handle such circumstances? These are some of the things we are sharing this morning. How do you handle circumstances when everybody who is coming around you to ask you out is a married man? How do you handle it when your friends around you, all of them have bought the latest cars? They have all kinds of fine, powerful, luxury cars. And they have the latest iPhone. And they have the latest this and the latest that. And you are looking at yourself and it's as if you are being intimidated with them by all these things. How do you go about it? The scripture says, says that you have been strengthened with power. You have been, can, we, can we get the scriptures? You have been strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. 
Wow, I love the scripture so much. It reminds me of that you have charged your inverter batteries. Your inverter batteries is the thing now supplying light to the house. The house is not generating its own powers. It's receiving powers from the inverter. The same way the Holy Spirit is inside you. And the Bible says that he's already supplying you with might. What is that mind? Ability and capacity. He's supplying with might. He's supplying with ability. He's supplying with capacity to be able to handle difficult situation and situations and difficult people. Friends, Christianity is a spiritual journey. You cannot do Christianity with mere power or bare hands. As a Christian, you are battling with conflict powers. You need power to discharge your duties. You need power to help you during the times of temptation. The Bible says that that power is already supplied. It being, being strengthened. In other words, you are supplied. You are energized with might. According to his glorious power. The power he's giving you is not according to your need. The power he's giving you is according to how rich the giver is. You see, if I have a bottle of water, four liters, and I, I'm, I'm drinking water, I can only drink water according to that four liters. When the four liters is over, I will need to look for water again. Or you have your generator. The moment the fuel is over, you may need to put fuel again. The, the power will go on. But the power God is supplying you for difficult situations and difficult people is not according to what you need. So even if you need four volts or four arms of power, God says, I'm going to give you a limitless source of power. So which means you are already ready. You have the capacity to handle difficult people and difficult situations. Say amen. amen. Did you just say amen or the amen? Can you say that amen again? Say to yourself, I have what it takes to handle difficult situations and difficult people. Say it again. Say it again. Look at what the way you're saying. Say it properly. One to go. So, friends, you have what it takes to engage in spiritual warfare. You have what it takes to engage in moral conflict. Have you noticed that there are some people when they need protection and they need power, they need wealth, they need influence, they go meet some people for power to be able to do that. For you, you don't need to do that. Power is already supplied you through the Holy Spirit that is living inside you. Shout, I have power. I can't hear. Shout, I have power. I have power. Listen, that's why the Bible says the grace is sufficient for you. No matter the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Oh, when you're dealing, the, this power you are being given is no power to cast out devils. Oh. It is power for patience, power for long suffering with joy. That's what I mean, that this power that you have, when you are dealing with circumstances that you need to endure, the might has been supplied. When you are dealing with people, you need patience, the might has been supplied. And listen, there is also joy. It's difficult to deal with difficult people and maintain your joy. There are some people who are so draining. There are some people who you, you relate with them. It looks as if everything in you is living. But you already have the strength that when you go through this, you don't lose your joy. Your joy is intact. I thought you, you would say a big amen. I was sharing this morning uh, and I was saying to them, what will it look like that you're a believer and all the people who are coming around you are married men? It is Jimoke's husband that is showing you love and care. He's, he's very romantic, very caring. Before you say you sneeze, everywhere will catch cold. As much as when, you, when he calls you on the phone, and your voice is sounding like you're tired. He has run from Iboba Hill to your house, uh, to, uh, 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 inside Jerry to come and look for you. But he's not your husband. He is Jimoke's husband. How do you say no to this? Strength has been given to you to do so. And that strength is the might that God supplies to you. 
How do you resist the temptation of joining Yahoo and buying things with money you didn't suffer for? The one you stole. How do you resist the temptation might has been given to you? How do you resist the temptation to live in a crazy world? To live in a world where everybody seems to be crazy. To live in a world where people seem to be angry and you go on social media, they are lashing themselves. There is, there is a con continuous fight. As if everybody is angry. How do you handle such a situation? How can you be different in a crazy world? The might has been given to you. How can you stand for what is right when everybody supports what is wrong? And if you stand for what is right, they will give you names. They will call you all sorts of names. Criticize you. Say all kinds of things against you. How do you stand? How do you stand not to cheat when people around you are cheating and making money with it? How do you stand not to defy your marital vows when everybody around you are calling you a uh, woman rapper, look at you. How do you stand? He said the might has been given to you. You know, a lot of times, those of us who are believers, you are behaving as if you are helpless. That in the midst of all of this, I can't stand. I'm the only one. He knows that you are in the midst of the world. That's why he says, be wise as serpents. Be as innocent as doves. He knows that in this world you will face tribulation. So before the tribulation came, he supplied you with strength. He supplied you with strength. He supplied you with strength. So that when you are dating your girlfriend, you can say no to sex outside marriage and you have the strength to do so. Are you still here? Are you sure you are still here? Are you sure you are still here? How do you tolerate people who are different from you? The strength has been given to you. Being strengthened with might according to a glorious power. Listen to me. It looks as if it's becoming normal for your wife to be pregnant before marriage. That people are even saying these days that you better check the girl. Pastor Prince was advised before you pay bride price, test this girl to see whether she can conceive. That's the world we are living in. Those who call themselves Christians, those who don't call themselves Christians, everybody is participating in this process. The question is this, you that is listening to me now or you that will listen to me after, question, how do you stand? Stop saying I'm helpless. Stop saying I can't do anything. Yes, you can do something. The strength has been given. It's for you to discover how to work with this strength. And so, let's talk about the area that has to do with patience and long suffering. I love that part. I love the part that has to do with to endure without complaint is different from enduring without uh, retaliation. Patience, to endure without complaint, to endure without retaliation, long suffering. How do you endure without complaint? Patience, the power has been given to you. What is the opposite of uh, um, cowardice and despondency? Long suffering. Capacity to see it through. Patience is the opposite of wrath and revenge. I will not insult you back. All of us have been given that power. And why are we not seeing, in our, seeing it in our lives? Because you have not encountered the truth. The truth that has to do with it has not hit your heart. He says, give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. But let's take the second scripture. The second scripture is verse 12. Before we now start tying up the truth. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Let's talk about the part of thanksgiving. You know, we are on a rise to thanksgiving. How many times have you thanked God for the things you don't see? It's easy to thank God for an alert. It's easy to thank God that I bought a house, I bought a car, I got married, I had a child, I have a child, and someone gave me a car, and all of that. It's easy to thank God for all of that. I appreciate that. Now, Paul is thanking God, the Father, for qualifying him. You can't see that qualification. You can't touch it. Yet it is something to thank God for. Before I come to the, I come to the scriptures, let's look at, have you ever thanked God that now you are more kind than you were yesterday? 
Have you ever thanked God that you're more mature, that you handle matters better than you used to handle it yesterday? Have you ever thanked God that you, now you're humble? Have you ever thanked God that you see things from a better perspective? Are they, these are things to thank God for. Sometimes we seem to stay in the ingratitude mood for a very long time. God forbid 250 million times. What if you come on in January and God refused to do any new thing that is tangible in your life? Will you still sustain that dance you danced on Sunday with the Ashwabi? Will God still be that good? Are you still here? Are you still here? Will God still be this good? Will God still be good when your last child is 25 years and another child has not been added to it? Will God still be good? Will God still be good that you're believing and trusting by now? You'd have gotten married or have, have children and they haven't come yet. Will God still be good? Will you still dance that kind of dance that you were dancing that day? Sometimes we have amnesia. Sometimes we suffer some kind of amnesia. We completely forget that there was a time you were not this wise. There was a time you were not this kind. There was a time you didn't see things from this perspective. There was a time you were absolutely very foolish. Very foolish. There was a time you had 200,000 you did use all the money to buy clothes. You didn't think about investing in forest or crypto or everything. You, didn't, you just, what was in your mind that to buy something to come to this church and just shock us with your latest outfit. Are you still here? And then four years after 200,000 have entered your hand, you hit your head and say, how foolish I was four years ago. If I knew what I knew now, some people are looking at themselves. If I knew what I knew now, Maybe I would have done something. Maybe I, I would have built, finished building my house. Maybe I've, I've bought a land. I was thinking that if I'm going to buy a land, I have to have 250 million. Only for you to discover that as a community that we can pay small, small and get the land out. But you use your own to buy clothes. Or use it to, to go, we went to a lounge and say, drink of me. And you exhausted 200,000. Four years after, you are wiser. Can you thank God for that? Can you thank God for that? Can you thank God that you're no more the chairman of Mali's Keepers Association of Nigeria? You would, some of us would have won that award four years ago. Successfully won that award. You kept Mali's with God, kept Mali's with Satan, kept Mali's with yourself. And the devil was looking at you. you even they keep Mali's with me, we invent Mali's. You even they keep Mali's with me. And this is a few years after. There was a time that you used to beat your wife to stupor. But look at how you have grown. You didn't have a divorce, but you don't be that woman anymore. It's something to thank God for. But unfortunately, we are trained to see only breakthroughs, breakthroughs, breakthroughs. That's why he said you're supplied with might for patience, long-suffering with joy. Everybody clap. Everybody clap. Everybody clap. Are you still here? Are you still? I don't want the class to be boring, so clap. Are, are you still here now? Do you remember when the last money in your account you used it to go and buy phone? It's not that you're doing phone business. It's not that the business you're doing has to do with, with phone, that you're going to use it to generate any money. You just bought it for social, for status. So when I pull out my phone like this, they go, no, say I did. Now you have, now I, I'm not saying that if, uh, I'm, no, you have looked back and said I would have made a different decision. I should have made a different decision altogether. That coming to a place of self-awareness is what I want you to thank God for. That, that you grew. But in this context, he says we are thanking God who has qualified us. Say qualified us. I can't hear you, my friends. And who has qualified us to be partakers? Do you have it in NLT? Who has qualified us to be partakers? Always thanking the Lord who has enabled us, Jesus, to share. Listen to me. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection made you fit, rendered you fit to share in the inheritance of the saints and the light. Listen, when you talk about this kind of gospel, I need to act it as a movie. Can I get about three or four choir members? Please come. Just move my choir boys. You know, when you're, when you're doing something, there is accreditation. 
accredit. I'm very, very surprised to see elders in church. Elders like Osar Osaro and uh, what here? El 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 elders like Odion and elders like Stanley in church. You came to the wrong place, though. You must have passed. Liberty. Let them, let them be sure. They, came to, they don't have time to come for midweek service. What is happening to you? I'm afraid, though. I hope we are not in any kind of problem here. Put it on social media. It's audio and uh, this I'm talking about. So, which means you have been deceiving God. It means that you really didn't have time to come for Bible study and you refuse to come. Yes, audio. So, you people can come for midweek service because you're doing dedication today. Oh, my God. It's okay. Is that your son in church? He has to talk in this matter. When he sees me talking like this, he says, Mommy, sorry. Mommy, sorry. He will know that pastor has been stressed. My son, you're around. Look at what they are doing to me. No, it's not your mom. Look at look, this uncle. Uh, look at it's this man that is doing it. I hope you allow the online church to be running. Don't shut it down, no. Had it been, I know, or do they come midweek service? I was saying that, um, look at that scripture. Look at that scripture. If all of you who know about accreditation, let's do a little drama. Always thanking the Father who has enabled us. Or you bring the word qualify. This is the qualification gate. In other words, if you are qualified here, all the inheritances, hearing from God, prosperity, breakthrough, signs and wonders, excelling in life, protection, preservation, long life, any good thing you can ever think about for what Jesus died. Every believer, you have an inheritance that is allotted to you. He said the lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. You must have a book where you're writing revelation. You must have a book. You must have a, As we're preaching like this, there are revelations that are coming. You will forget it. You must be penciling it down. Put it in writing. Either with your note or something. When you want to pray tomorrow, those are some of the things that come out as prayer. This is the gate. Where is it? Where is it, my dear? Come. This is the inheritance. Inher Think about anything you can ever think about. Inheritances. The thing that you leave your house every morning to go and do is for you to have good things of life. It's for you to have breakthrough. For you to fulfill destiny. For you to excel in your career. Nobody wants to be lower. Nobody wants his tomorrow to be less than today. All of them, they are inheritances that are for saints in the light. In other words, Everyone that have given that has given their life to Christ, there are inheritances for you. Just imagine that this thing is put in such a way that there is a, 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 an accreditation committee whose job is before you get this thing, they will give you, they will check and give you accreditation for you to assess it. And here you are now coming. You meet the accreditation committee. He said he has qualified us. I'm turning this scripture around. To say, let's imagine that this qualification that they are talking about is that someone will stand at the gate of your inheritance to check whether you are qualified before they give you the inheritance. And this is a person who is standing, the chairman of uh, um, Inheritance Association of Nigeria. So he has come. Now you yeah, check if he's qualified. He's not qualified. He has disqualified him from the inheritance. Oh yeah, another person where is that? Pastor Dayo, oh yeah, come. He has disqualified, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. He said he say he's a gentleman. He has qualified him to go and collect inheritance. He didn't check the paper at all, oh. He didn't check at all. As he just look up, he just look up for body, he qualify him. Oh yeah, evening, come, 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 quickly, quickly, quickly. Maybe they quarreled at prior practice. As she came to accreditation board, he disqualified her completely. Thank God, the accreditation and the qualification 
for you to receive your inheritance is not in the hands of any man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, no power in the universe can disqualify you from your inheritance. No power in the universe can question your accreditation, can question your credentials. Christ is the one that did it. He qualified you and it is available for you to receive it, but it answers to knowledge. Hey! Should we continue now? But let's reverse it. That these are the saints who understand that no power in the universe can stop their qualification. They understand that fact. They understand the truth. Now here is sickness. Here is, there, here is poverty. Here is the difficulties of life. Trying to stop them from their qualification. And they know that they have been qualified. How do you think they'll go about it? He said, having, he said giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified us. They know they are qualified. And here is sickness and disease or poverty or ancestral causes trying to say to them, you don't have a right to this inheritance. How will you behave? Kick them out of the road and collect your stuff. That's what knowledge will do to you. The moment you know, thank you so much, you're free. The moment you know, listen, the moment you know what is available for you, don't negotiate it. You just go straight and collect what is yours. May I announce to you, your inheritance is not by effort. Your inheritance is by knowledge. That's why scripture says, he says, give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That's Ephesians 1.17. In the knowledge of you. In other words, if you have knowledge, you will need to, that knowledge to be unveiled to you. If you have knowledge, you will need an application of that knowledge. He said, give us the truth of wisdom so that we may know. Knowing is an experience. Reading this scripture is different from knowing it. The moment it becomes an experience, hearing from God becomes easy. The moment it becomes an experience, prosper, assessing the things. The relationship you have with God is what opens you up to the resources that are available. The moment you know, the gates are open. The next scriptures, before I begin to talk about how to apply it. The next scriptures. For he, oh my Jesus. Let's do another drama. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness. Let me have about three or four choir members. Let me show you what rescue means. Rescue is not just deliverance. Let, come this way. Come on, come on top. Come on top. Come on top. Now. This is the realm of darkness. Oh, yeah. Can I? Uh, 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 Dayo, come and put your hands on them. Lock your hands. You come in the middle. One person in the middle. This one has been trapped in darkness. Look at the way they are. Look at the way ignorance is molesting him. Trapped in the dominion. That is in the reign of darkness. What do you have in the reign of darkness? Dark things. Please give me all your attention. Give me all your attention. Some of the things that are molesting us. Look at the way they are. Look at the way poverty is hitting him with his head. Look at the way frustration is giving him a conk. Because he is trapped in their reign. May I prophesy today that every part of you that is trapped in the reign of darkness, knowledge will break it now in the name of Jesus. Every part of you that has been hijacked by darkness, it will be released in the name of Jesus. Look at the way addicted to approval. Look at the way addicted to approval. I must have the approval of certain people to feel okay about myself. Look at the way he's attracted. She doesn't, he doesn't know that he's accepted in the beloved. Look at the way I must, I must reach the standard of some people, certain people to feel okay about myself. So he doesn't feel complete. He feels that there's something about him. Ah, I must be punished. I'm not worthy. I must be punished. I'm not worthy. All of that is dealing with him. Oh, he didn't know that he has been redeemed. I didn't tell you that the topic of this message is you are redeemed. But give me that scripture. Let me show you the other part. Let me show you the other part. Let me give, get some two men. Oh, Sarah, come, come, come. Uh, what him be? Um, Esther, husband. Stanley. 
come, come, come. Stanley, just come, 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 come immediately. Oh yeah, come this way. You know they come midweek service. Today when you come. Nobody say get what they do, well important. But you just traded that time and convinced yourself that it's not important. Come, let me use this so I can hear the message enter your ear. This is now the, the realm of the kingdom of light. The kingdom of light. This is the kingdom of light. I want you to watch what will happen. I want you to watch what will happen. Oh, Rabba who shake brada ya bo shake rada ya bo shkele barata. Oh, hey, come. Oh, Pastor Larry, well, I want you to. This is another realm. The people who did this drama for me were beating the person. Were you, was it you they were beating? Beat him continuously. Don't beat him the one that will take go to hospital. Oh. Don't beat the one they beat the boy in doing doing the college. Beat him drama on. Oh yeah, lock your hands now. Now the scripture said, read it together. I want to go. I want to go. Let me tell you what that rescue means. Rescue means rescue. Rescue means. To snatch out of danger. To snatch from danger. What Jesus did was, he first of all snatched him from danger. Rescue means, and drew him to self. That's the first thing. I thought, uh, I thought you, you don't understand. You don't understand. Jesus snatched him from this danger. And drew him to himself. First of all. None of them can touch him. He now conveyed, conveyed, transported him into the kingdom of his dear son. Are we together? No wonder the choir will say, I raise hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. Fear has lost his hold on me. The moment he was rescued from here, all this nonsense lost their control and their hold over him. He's now in this place. And I want to show you his position. Give me four chairs. Give me four chairs. Quickly, give me four chairs. I want to show you his position. He is now in another position. He wasn't snatched and dropped on the floor. Let me show you what happened. Here is the father. The father, come and sit here. Where is your right hand? Okay, sit here. Here is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come and sit here. That's your right hand. Here is Jesus. Jesus, come and sit here. Someone is missing. When he rescued him, the Bible said he made him to sit in the heavenly places. At Christ. So, when the father looks at Aaron, he's not seeing Aaron, he's seeing Jesus. The vehicle that brought him to this place. When the enemy is looking for you, he doesn't see you. He sees Jesus. And then he's even angrier with you if there's any word like that. He said, many years ago, Jesus came and deceived me. And he was killed. And I was deceived. I won't allow myself to be deceived again. That's why he's saying. That's why he's pursuing you with everything. To kill you. To finish you. But you're seated with Christ in the heavenly places. He rescued you from the drama. He rescued you from the dominion of darkness and then th he snatched you from danger, drew you to himself and then he conveyed you and transported you to another kingdom. This is something to give God thanks for. The last scriptures on that. So what is our state now? You're free to go. So what is our state? What is our state? NLT. NLT. What is our state? Who purchased? I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. 
I want to announce to my father's ancestry that I am free from what my father did, from what my mother did, from what my brothers and sisters did, that you will no longer charge it to my account anymore. I am free from what my father, his father, and his father's father, whatever the devil is charging to your account, you are completely free. Your freedom was purchased, not with money, not with dollars, not with pounds. Your freedom was purchased with blood, Kai. Oh my Jesus, I am completely free. Listen, freedom runs in my blood. You need to say this, that whenever the enemy is trying to charge you to your past, you turn around and say, excuse me, excuse me, what you're charging me for has been paid for. If there is anything in your father's life or your mother's life, you're seeing showing up in your own life, you have a right to stand and shout out. When the devil begins to accuse you, and making you feel maybe some things you did in the past that were mistakes the blunders you made the mistakes you made the weaknesses the insults and the shame please when he's bringing that to your mind if he, even if you're in your shop stand up and shout i'm free not only am i free i'm forgiven hey, you know one thing i must you must take home in this conversation today is listen <laughs> if you paid for something and you haven't collected it or you paid you bought a land for 250 million and, and tomorrow and while you're trying to build on that land and you're trying to conclude the papers and tomorrow if any comes with 350 billion do you know that they can return your money to collect if any's money it has happened to us when we used to do stand up for fun one of those artists we gave him money in February. Concert, charity concert, August. In August came, he returned, he didn't return our money. He refused to come for our meeting. Why? Some other person paid something higher. Let me tell you something. What Jesus used to buy you, there is no thing on earth that is heavier, that is costlier than the blood of Jesus. Therefore, you have been ransomed from the kidnap nobody can buy you back sickness is not enough to buy you out with what god used to buy you poverty ancestral causes the problems in nigeria difficulties even those who go to juju house to call your name severally by the time they finish the ritual for your head has been completed what they are charging you for you have been forgiven of it Hey, what the enemy trying to say, ah, catch Moses, kill and catch Moses. You have already been forgiven before he started. Oh, but you need to know. I, I said to them today that one of the things we should never stop thanking God for is Jesus. Let me ask you a question. If the air we are breathing, there is a petrol station where you go to buy it, like you buy gas. How many of you can afford it? Hey, afford on die sins. If they said uh, uh, one meter of air, one liter of air is 250, and someone like you, you need, you need 100 liters every two days or every day to survive. I've not spoken about your children. I've not spoken about your grandchildren. How many of us, you will run out of cash. You will run out of resources to pay for the air that you breathe. I want us to be grateful for what Jesus did for us. Hey, if the enemy ever stands up and says that the rent Jesus paid to save you has expired and you are now told to pay for your sins one after the other, by now, uh -uh, every morning the devil will come out as you wake up like just take whip like this, viam, viam. Because some of us now, you may be paying for 10 years. Some of us may be paying for 20 years. Jesus took one debt and paid once and for all. The payment, the blood of Jesus never loses his power. The blood of Jesus never gets to a point where it's, it's getting thinner, he's running away, he's running out, he's running out. It doesn't run out. It is completely ever sure. Hell, imagine if there is a committee that was put in charge to wake you up every morning. That unless they wake you up, you won't wake up. And one day you go and offend the committee. Are you seeing reasons why you should thank God? 
Imagine that for you to sit down in this church, you must first of all take and phone one number. They will give you one code. When they give you one code, you will not be able to sit. And now you are calling. You, MTN is angry with you. You call. Say the number you are calling is switched off. Please try again later. Three days have come. They have gone. It means that you're going to stand on one spot for three days until any day the number will go. You see why he qualified you. He qualified you so it won't be by your effort. It won't be by your behavior. He qualified you so that you can recognize it and just align with it. Imagine if there is a committee that is involved for you sleeping and it is turn by turn sleep. 7.2 billion people in the world counting. That before you sleep, they must credit you one code. It is that code you punch on your phone to sleep. Some of us, you may have, for five years, you will never reach your turn. Because some people have, are very close to those committee people. They will go and bribe them and collect all the codes ahead of time. He qualified you. This qualification is not according to your credentials. Hey. It's not according to your might. It's according to, he said, come, I have done it. You take. You take, that's all. So, how, what are the practical ways you can live out this truth? The practical things, practical steps you can take. The first practical step is you must continue to nurture this truth in your heart. It should never leave your heart. The moment Mary was told that she was going to bear a child, she calculated it, a virgin, give birth. It's not possible. But the Bible told us what she did. The Bible says she was nurturing that thing in, your heart, in her heart. You know what that nurture means? It's what goats do. When goats eat something, when a goat eat something, he will eat it, bring it out again, eat it, chew it, chew it, chew it, chew it, chew it swallow, bring it out again. That's what meditation is. Meditation is you take this truth, you masticulate them, you eat them, you, you turn them around in your heart. You use it to paint pictures. You see all these pictures I painted to you today? Were pictures I painted to myself in the study. I found myself trapped. And I went to check the meaning of rescue with a dictionary. And I discovered what it meant using complete word study. And I applied it to it. That's how to do meditation. Mary began to ponder. She saw herself. She took the word and used that word to create dramas in her heart. Use it to act a movie. Use, she saw herself pregnant because that was said she was pregnant. She saw herself uh, giving birth because that word was said she was going to give birth. It was that meditation that broke the virginity without a man sleeping with her. That's why she became pregnant. Joseph, uh, Jacob did it. Abraham did it. How am I going to be the father of many nations? A Abraham's mind couldn't quite conceptualize it. He thought about it, thought about it. He didn't walk. He said, no, no, this ain't. God said, okay, let me help you. Come, 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 Abraham. Why I start looking? As Abraham was, Abraham was putting the word in her, his heart. You're going to be the father of many nations. He said, okay, this star is one child. This star is second child. He looked. He saw Caban and Ahigbe. He looked. Uh, uh, he saw Lilian Edozie. He looked. He saw Chichi Eze. He looked. He saw dominion. As he was seeing all those things, they were forming, they became children in his mental, in the canvas of his heart. He wasn't the only one that did it. How was the world created? The Bible said that the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of it. And God said, he said the spirit of the Lord was brooding over the waters. The Holy Spirit, who carried the solution, was brooding over darkness. And darkness became light. What you need to do, practical things you do, take the scriptures. Sit down when there is no noise. Your children have gone to bed. You don't need to finish the fall. This one, I did it in two weeks. One scripture at a time. If I don't understand it, I say, Holy Spirit, reveal. If I don't understand it, I'll take a commentary. Not because I'm coming to preach it to you. Because I have to feed myself before I feed you. You see, Jesus said, virtue has left me. You know virtue is? Virtue is ability to solve problems. So when Jesus said, virtue has left me. Now that is Jesus, the son of God. Do you know how many virtue leave you when you go to work? When you go for events, different people touch you. 
as they are touching you, spirit, spirit is leaving you. Ability to solve problem is leaving you. As they are touching you, favor is leaving you. As they are touching you, as if it is dropping. So when Jesus shouted, virtue is leaving me. When you do meditation, you are doing what? You are increasing virtue. You are multiplying virtue inside you. You are resourcing yourself to be able to solve problems. That was what Mary did. Jacob, your uncle, did it too. When Jacob came to a difficult situation, came to a tight corner, what did he do? He used meditation. This meditation I'm telling you today, many religions, many religions around the world do it. It's not just enough to read the Bible. You're reading the Bible to understand the Christian concept. Contest. So that when they say John the Baptist, you understand what they're talking about. They say um, Isaiah, you understand what they're talking about. But solving problems is a product of meditation. At that particular point in time, you are cross-pollinating your thoughts with the thoughts of God. The thoughts of God is coming to your head, refining your thoughts to be able to create answers to the questions you're asking. It comes by meditation. Practical things you will do. As you're doing it, you know what he's doing? The lies in your life is being dealt with. Because what makes us not to receive the word of God are the lies in our hearts. Listen carefully, please. I want to say something very fundamental. You see, there's a difference between the head and the heart. It's called mind and emotion or imagination and emotion. They are two different things. There are many things you know in your head that your heart have not accepted. I'll prove an example to you. You meet a young man. You feel in your heart that you love this boy. But your head is telling you that this boy doesn't love you. You have two different things. In your head, you know the truth. But your heart has refused to accept the truth. Let me give you another example. You're going to buy business. You're going to buy something. Why are you buying the thing? Your head, your heart tell you feel that this person I'm buying this thing from is fraudulent, is shifty. Your head tells you it's not true. So someone is negotiating a business deal with you, telling you in so and so you make so and so amount of money. You're investing in forest. This week something says pull out your money. Your heart tells you pull out your money. Your head said it's not true. Just keep it there, let it multiply some more. Other times, your head tells you something, but your heart says something. It's called head and heart split. That's a split between your head and your heart. And listen to me. Until there's a harmony between your head and your heart, you can't succeed. What your head is saying and what your heart is saying must be the same thing. What is it that causes heart split? Lies. Head and heart split. There has to be a fusion of the head and the heart for something to happen, for that to be combustion, for something to happen. There has to be that fusion. And many people in church, that fusion is not there anymore. I'll tell you a story and then we'll close. A young lady came from a family where her dad didn't quite have anything before he married the mom. The mom was working in a place where she was being paid so well. And halfway through, he resigned and they quite paid her a lot of money from the severance uh, um, uh, fee or whatever it is called. Yeah, yeah. Benefit, severance benefit. She took the money, went and invested in her husband's business. And the business blossomed. They bought machines, bought plenty of machines. The business became bigger. They had more customers. They can buy for, for big, huge contracts in that area. And things were happening. And they started, business started growing. They started employing some more people. Uh, that's how they employ, they imply janitors, imply, employed one lady who is a cleaner. But money has started coming. You know, sometimes if you are not careful, money can change you. Power can change you. If you don't know yourself, money can change you. Power can change you. You can call God stupid boy if you are not careful because of money. The moment the, the man saw the cleaner, his heart was captured by the cleaner. Very, very captured. 
before why are you laughing? Very, very captured. Before you knew it, first child, second child, third child, fourth child, fifth child, Piam went and married the cleaner. But the wife was devastated. She couldn't bear it. She couldn't bear the pain. She could there was nobody that we didn't know about Inahi. If we knew what Inahi would not we have known what to do. Nobody knew how to get her to release the bitterness in her heart. No, there was nothing people before you knew she became sick. She had only two children. Say Jack Robinson, she passed on. Fast forward in two years later. The daughter became pregnant. The daughter, daughter got married. The daughter did not know that that thing put a lie in her heart. That my husband should never have so much money. Because if he has so much money, he will abandon me. She didn't know. And her, her husband will vow for contract. People will put in businesses in millions. Before the thing touches her hand, it will disappear into thin air. There was no price. So we bind demon, bind the city of demon, cast out devil, jump up, jump down, nothing. That thing kept happening to that person. But it was after a long time when the ministry of inner healing started. You know, in inner healing, we're not the one telling you. We didn't even know. They, I didn't even know this story I'm telling you. It was in that inner healing that I now knew what happened. It was where she was at her inner healing. That then we, quite, we were from very young, very well, just didn't know quite much. She started weeping. She started weeping. And then she lifted her hand and told us that she didn't know that she had imbibed the lies that her husband should never ever become wealthy because of that thing that happened to her mom. And the moment that she broke her agreement with those lies and renounced those lies, boom! Those things that didn't happen yesterday were happening as if they are normal. Listen to me. What lies does? The lies will replace all the scriptures I've read now. He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us into the, 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 the kingdom of his dear son. The, if you have a lie that the devil, because in your father's house there are five or six witches, that they have destroyed five people there, that they are coming to destroy you. you will, that one will become the truth. You will turn the scriptures upside down. It will now be, hasn't abandoned us in the dominion of darkness and then left us stranded so we couldn't enter the kingdom of his death. So that's the lie you believe, but you won't know you believe it all. That's how you will say, I know say God, power, deo. I know that one, I'll not doubt it. But you see devil, you see Satan. Hi! That hi you have said is lies you believe unconsciously that the power of the devil is stronger than the power of God. That's why in our home video, they can use two hours to talk about the devil, how powerful the devil is, and use two minutes to talk about the power of God. And then they will say, to God be the glory. That is the lie the writer of the movie believes that he's selling to you. And many of us have succeeded in, in imbibing the lie unconsciously that the devil is so powerful. That witches and wizards are so powerful. That if they catch you before they would release you, they would have even killed you before God would come. Many years ago, a young lady said she went to, to hell. She went to heaven. And God told her that all of us should throw away our earrings and throw away our jeans. All our gold, God told her we should throw it away. That she saw uh, Papa Idahosa is in hell. He saw Bimbo Dukoya is hell. He saw everybody. Everybody is going to hell. Many people, yes, only she enter heaven. Some people left us here because of that, uh, this thing. And say, ah, Pastor Geda even wear nika. Now you be the head monitor for hell. This over seven years ago. On Saturday, I went for a program and I met the young man. He knelt and said, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I was wrong. I'm so sorry I left. 
It was a lie that I believed. Do you know? When you are believing a lie, you won't know it's a lie. You, you won't know it's a lie. If you know it's a lie, you won't believe it. Do you know you can have a lie that you are not supposed to be wealthy? And you won't know that you believe that lie. That lie will be so real. You have been partnering with it. You have agreed with it. Where the Bible says he forgave us our sins. You will believe the lie. Maybe because your father does not forgive anybody. You will believe the lie that before God will forgive you, you must climb Kilimanjaro Mountain and from there you fly and fall. You must fast for 40 days that if you don't do this hard work, God will not forgive you. You can believe a lie that except you have the approval of some certain people, you will never feel okay about yourself. It's a lie. I know what lies do. They lie that God cannot resource us. A young lady here can believe a lie that except you sleep with A, B, C, D, E, F, you will never matter in life. Powerful lie. You can believe a lie that except you are naked on the internet, you go there and you're dancing naked, you are not valuable. You can believe this lie and you're working with this lie and still come to church every day and not know that you're believing a lie. Today, your agreement with lies will be destroyed. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Someone said, he said, I don't want to, I don't want to really succeed. I said, why? He said, because if I succeed in our house, when people succeed, they don't last long. So when they succeed, after some time, they'll fall. The person said, I don't really want to succeed. And he believed it as a, something good though. Except the Lord opens your eyes to the lies you believe. Ha. I pray for you today. Your agreement with lies will be destroyed. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Go with me today. Say, Father, thank you for Jesus. Father, thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. I ask you to open my eyes to see the lies I'm believing so that I can break my agreement with them. Lord, today, I ask you to show me the lies I believe about myself. I believe about my community. I believe about my nation. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, I declare today, in the name of Jesus, I declare today, that I am not a lie. So I'm going, to, I'm going to lead us to break the power of lies. So you're not going to open your mouth. I will just lead you and then I will leave you. You continue from there. Today I declare that I will not believe a lie. I break my agreement with the fact that God cannot supply me with power. That I need to walk my own power by myself. I break my agreement with that lie I renounce the power of that lie in the name of Jesus I break my agreement with the fact that the devil's power is powerful I break my agreement with the fact that the devil is strong I break my agreement I renounce that lie in the name of Jesus I break my agreement that God may not deliver me all the time in the name of Jesus, I renounce that lie. I break my agreement with the spirit of death. I, de I break my agreement. I renounce the spirit of death. I renounce the fact that I will die before my time. I break that agreement. I break my agreement with the spirit of sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the lie. That oh my God, abaho sheke bradori abaho sheke leba rasi kabo sheke leba rataya braho sheke brata. Today, in the name of Jesus, I declare every my every of my agreement with hell is destroyed by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, my agreement with hell is disannulled. In the name of Jesus, I break my agreement with fear. I break my agreement with fear. I break my agreement with fear of the future. I break my agreement with fear of tomorrow. I break my agreement with fear of the unknown. I break my agreement with I might not be able to marry properly. 
I break that agreement. I renounce it in the name of Jesus. I break my agreement with the spirit of lack. Now, now you see the people I'm praying for. Let me tell you, let me tell you another thing the devil does when you're doing this kind of work. That's when I know people who have head and heart split. This is when I know people who have head and heart split. As we are talking, you'll be looking around like this. You'll be looking around and things will be happening. And the enemy wants you to be distracted like that so that that agreement will not be broken. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My, one of our friends were sharing with us that a man sponsored a crusade with a lot of money. He said but he discovered that when they were praying, he was be, be looking at her. Looking at her this. The Spirit of the Lord told him to call the man. He said, you know what you're doing? To, you know what is happening to you? Your moment of encounter is passing. So, because you have head and heart split, what they are saying is a lie to you. So, the enemy keeps distracting you with that and the power of encounter will come. And it happens, it happens amongst us a lot. The person is busy looking at it, looking at this, looking at that, looking at your phone. That's when you check Twitter, check, time will pass. Today, in the name of Jesus, I declare, I break my agreement with fear. I break my agreement with death. I renounce the spirit of death. I renounce the spirit of destruction in the name of Jesus. I break my agreement. Now on your own, on your own, there are some things that, that, that creep into your heart. On your own. Please give me my phone. Give me my phone. And then you're going to do this. The second one is begin to say, Jesus, I ask you to replace with the truth that these things that I am renouncing, open your mouth and say that. Begin to ask the Lord to replace those lies with the truth. Begin to ask the Lord to replace those lies with the truth. Begin to ask him before we, we continue. Replace these lies I believe unconsciously with your truth. In the name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus, I bless you with truth encounter. I bless you with truth encounter. May the Lord reveal the truth over you. In the name of Jesus, I pray that God will continue to show you the lies so that you can break your agreement with them. And I pray that the truth of God's word will be made evident in your life. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Shall we receive? We bless this communion today in the precious name of Jesus. We bless it and declare that our eyes will see. Open our eyes to see in Jesus' precious name. Can we just quickly receive uh, our offerings and tithes before we conclude with our dedication? Um, Audio, can I speak with you? So let's, receive, let's give our offering so that we can close up officially. Uh, can can uh, um, Let's receive our offering. <sighs> Bring your child. Lord, we ask you to bless the offering that we give today. Make it transfer in Jesus' name. I want you to give, to give, um, so that we can shut down online and then we're good to go. Right, so the service is officially over. I would like to do uh, take a dedication for audio and the family. Um, Osara, please come. Stanley, please come.
the children come. Where is the second baby? Audio, audio, where is your mom? Mama, audio, please come. Um, Joy, that's your sister, who? Okay. That's, that's your sister. That's Joy's sister. Yes, I saw her there. Mama, come. Um, when I went to see the children at home, Odion's mom was not only dancing and praising God, she was sharing scriptures. Mama, come this way. She was sharing scriptures. Sharing. Then she said to me that these her children 